we can estimate the instantaneous rate of change, also known as the derivative or the slope of the tangent line using the average rate of change, which is the slope of the secant line. If you're not sure what those terms mean, I'd encourage you to watch my 2.1 video before watching this video. The table below shows values of the continuous function f of x. Estimate f prime of 2. When we're trying to find f prime, the way that we know how to find the derivative so far is by using our limit definition of the derivative that involves the difference quotient. But in order to do that, we need an actual function. We need to be given f of x equals something like x squared or x cubed or x plus 5. And we don't have that in this case. But what we do have is a table and it's only asking us to estimate. To estimate the instantaneous rate of change or estimating the derivative, we can use the average rate of change. So in order to estimate f prime of 2, I'm going to find the slope between these two points because 1 and 3 are very close to 2 and since the function is continuous, we can use the average rate of change to estimate the instantaneous rate of change. So I know that the average rate of change is going to be equal to f of 3 minus f of 1 all over 3 minus 1. f of 3 is 6 and f of 1 is negative 2. And now I just simplify. So we can say that f prime of 2 is approximately 4. Brin's height at time t is given by the function h, where h of t is measured in inches and t is measured in years. The table below shows values of h of t. Estimate h prime of 11, then interpret its meaning in the context of the problem. So in this case, I'm actually given what h of 11 is. 11 is one of my actual points. Up here, when we were trying to find f prime of 2, 2 was not an actual point. Unfortunately, there's not much that I can do because I'm still not given the actual function, and this would only be helpful if I was also given the actual function, because then I could apply my limit definition of the derivative. But it's only asking us to estimate h prime of 11. So I'm going to use the points on either side of t equaling 11, and I'm going to follow the same process for finding the average rate of change. Now I'll plug in my numbers for f of 13 and f of 9. And I get that h prime of 11 is approximately 2.45. I also need to interpret the meaning in the context of the problem. And part of that means that I need to include units here. So it's, it's not just 2.45, it's going to be 2.45 inches per year. Because when I was plugging it into the average rate of change formula, I was talking about h of t over t. And this should really be h of t, not f of t, because h is the function here. And now that my problem has a unit, I need to interpret the meaning in the context of the problem. So when I say h prime of 11, that means the slope of the tangent line at 11, or the, the rate that exactly at 11. This does not mean that when she was 11 years old, her height was 2.45 inches, because we didn't find h of 11. We were finding h prime of 11, the rate of change. So how you would successfully interpret this meaning in the context of the problem would be to write that when she was 11 years old, her height was changing at a rate of 2.45 inches per year. Using the graph of g of x, estimate g prime of 3. Remember that g prime of 3 just means the slope of the tangent line at 3. So I'm going to mark where x is equal to 3 on my graph. And then I'm going to sketch in an approximate tangent line. Now I can choose two points on that tangent line and find the slope between them. I selected the points 5, negative 0.5, and 0, negative 2.5. Now I'm just going to find the slope between these two points. And when I'm finding the slope between the two points, I can either use the formula m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or I can use the average rate of change is equal to f of a minus f of b all over a minus b. These are the same thing. This means that g prime of 3 is approximately 0.4. Use a graphing calculator to estimate the derivative at x equals 2, given that y equals root x times sine of x minus 2. Since it asks me to estimate, I'm going to do a similar process to what I did with the graph. 
So first I'm going to plug the function into my graphing calculator. And since we're dealing with sine, it's important that we switch our calculator to radian mode if you haven't done that already. Then I'm going to have it graph my function. And I want the zoom window to be on zoom trig because I'm dealing with a trig function. Okay, so here's my function and I need to find points that are close to x equals two so that I can get two points and then find the slope. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hit second calculate and I want it to calculate a value. And this is gonna let me plug in any x value that I want. I'm going to plug in the x value 1.5 and then I'm gonna copy down that point. So one of my points is 1.5 negative 0.587174. And then for my other point, I'm gonna do that same thing. I'm gonna hit second, calculate another value. And I want it to calculate the value at 2.5. Here's another point. And I'm hanging on to as many decimals as I can because I don't round or truncate until the very end of the problem. Now I'm just going to find the slope between these two points. And I get that y prime at x equals 2, or dy over dx at x equals 2, is approximately 1.345. And I'm going to round my decimal to three places because that's how you do it on the AP exam. And you might think, well, that's silly because if you have your graphing calculator anyways, what you could just do is use the math 8 button and then plug your function in and find the exact derivative at x equals 2, like this. And that will give you a more precise answer. But just for the purposes of this problem, I was trying to demonstrate estimating a derivative, not finding the exact form of a derivative. But if you do have your graphing calculator and you're asked to find a derivative, an exact derivative, this would be the way to go. Note that the exact answer doesn't exactly match up with the estimated answer, but that's okay since it was just asking for an estimate. 